let's start with Newcastle. They have finally completed the signing of Kieran Trippier. You got quite a bit of flack about being our first money signing. I know, I know. Saying, oh, he's only going for the money. For me, it doesn't bother me. I had no more reasons why I came back and money wasn't one of them. If it was, I would have stayed in Madrid. Kieran Trippier! Oh! Trips. Towards the end of my career at Tottenham, I was going for a tough patch. I was getting hammered. I admit it, you know, I weren't performing well. But I played with players who sometimes need that arm around them, you know, and that's normal. Did you get that at Spurs? I'm going to be honest with you, not really. Who was manager? Poch. Poch, yeah, yeah. yeah. Diego Simeone, like this guy uh, is a legendary manager, almost gangster like. Yeah, you you'd know? love him. You'd he, love him. Did he have the hairdryer? I've seen him kick off a few times. Like, yeah. If you argue about with him on the pitch, yeah, you might be a world class player, but if you're not going to run for me, you come off. After Christmas, we weren't allowed to say good morning. That's what the manager said. We had to say champions. And then Suarez is sprinting through just past the halfway line and Obviously, he doesn't know what's behind him, but you have Marcos Llorente screaming like, so low, so low, you're alone. I was praying it was going to score. <laughs> and then, yeah, he put it away and, yeah, we, and we won the league. Atletico Madrid are champions. They have done it. You scored a magical goal. You became a hero. In that one moment, everyone was like, good old Kieran Trippier. A great feeling to score for my country. I know Walker's quick, but I don't think I've ever run faster than him in my life. <laughs> when he was chasing yeah. And then we see like you guys celebrating, do you know what I mean? And the supporters throwing pints in there and the, the whole country was oh, oh, crazy, fire. weren't it? You yeah. know, and that's what we want. We want to put smiles on people's faces. And it's Italy who are the champions of Europe. What does it feel like to lose a Euro final? I was gutted. It, it, it was tough to take because we was there, you know, penalties. It's easy for me to come out in an interview and tell everybody what they want to hear. I'm not about that. So I don't want to be playing in the championship. I don't want to go down. Somebody thinks they're better than somebody else or whatever, egos. You're not going to succeed in the position that we're in. We all need to be together. We all need to fight. We want to stay in the league. But I believe in myself and the team. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here if I didn't. If we stay up, we need to build and then build again and build again and then go for the title. Welcome back to the True Geordie podcast today as guest. Wow. It's none other than Newcastle and England footballer, Kieran Trippier. Incredible. Thanks Cheers, for for Thanks for coming. Yeah, Cheers for having me, guys. Sometimes Cheers I feel like there should be like applause there or something, do you know what I mean? No, but we're not like uh, soccer AM, so it's fine. Yeah, frankly. Uh, but yes, yeah, it is weird though to have a, a, an active Premier League football long. So we've had like Alan Shearer, Ian Wright before, yeah. and then to have someone who's actually sort of still in the game is kind of... It's interesting for us because uh, obviously, unfortunately, you're injured. Uh, first off, how are you feeling? How's it going? <laughs> no, I'm feeling good. Um, obviously, disappointed with uh, the injury because of the start I had at Newcastle. Um, you know, I was going for a good moment, but these things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm positive about the injury. Um, it's just about fighting. Now I'm getting fit because I want to be back on the pitch. Yeah. And hopefully that soon. Was it a metatarsal or something? Fifth metatarsal. So there was, um, there was a fracture in there, so I had to have surgery. I had to have a bolt in it, um, but no, like I said, the, the surgeon's happy, my physios are happy, uh, so that makes me a little better. What's the normal guideline for how long people expect to get it's from different. that? It's different, yeah. it's different. Some some players have been six weeks, some players have been eight weeks, ten weeks, but yeah. obviously it's about the, the individual. For me now, it's just about supporting the lads, you know, getting the, yeah. getting the points on the board. It's funny with the uh, metatarsal, no one really knew what the fuck one was until David Beckham injured his. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so you've had quite an elite injury in that yeah. sense. You're, uh, you're up there with it's the best. Wayne Rooney, Wayne Rooney, David Beckham, Beckham yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, it's but we've seen what happens when they get rushed back. With Beckham, mm. he rushed himself back from the World Cup and he didn't look the same. So it is about taking your time. I yeah, guess. it is. And obviously I was a bit young then when, when Beckham done his, but... Mm. Um, yeah, you don't want to rush any injury back, but I've got the right people around me with my physios at the club, obviously the manager. Was it a stamp on you? To be honest with you, I felt pain like 10 minutes into the game, under my foot. Um, and I was thinking, oh, I must have been stamped on. So I carried on and then um, it was getting worse, the pain. Then obviously the free kick comes off, so I was taking that, you know, oh, yeah. and uh, half time, um, I was still struggling. So I thought, I'll give it, you know, second half to see how it is and it, it was that painful I had to come off but went for um, obviously a scan and I realised I broke my foot so I'm guessing when I first felt the pain I must have must have done it early in the game Jesus that's that's mad that um, and it, it's funny because for me uh, you know you watch as much football as you can but like you're someone who 
especially in your position as well as a fullback you guys don't get a lot of the credit I think only now in, in recent years people have seen the real value of how impactful a fullback can be but I didn't really understand how good you were until you were playing for Newcastle and I think a lot of Newcastle fans were the same we knew we were getting a good player but we were like this guy's world class like and I'm not just saying that because he sat in front of us I've said it on the kickoff many times like I guess you go to Spain and at that point it's a bit like out of sight out of mind but now you're in the Premier League and you're making such a difference to this team what do you think you've brought to the, the team that's given such a clear lift my experience in Spain definitely with the with the experiences I had there in the sense of the games I played the manager I was working for and I feel like the the position that Newcastle was in when I when I came here, I knew the position that they was in. That didn't scare me. Um, you know, I was ready for the challenge, and you know, spoke to a lot of the players. And I feel like they've, you know, we, we've we've gelled really well, me and my teammates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel that was important. But like we watched your first game, and you notice the difference in the movement of the ball. You notice the difference in the sh the structure of the team. There is a different feeling around since they made new signings. So it might not just be you, mm. but there is an overall tone change at the club, isn't there? With not yeah. only bringing you in, but you can see it having an impact on the field. I, I right? Feel, I feel like when you've had that mentality, it's funny because I'm not in the dressing room, but it's just it's coming through the TV right. screen where you're like, this guy is a winner, and when you've had a group of people who have been low on confidence and maybe not feeling like they are as good as they can be, to have someone come in with a fresh feel and a, and a fresh mentality and go, no lads, come on. Like, it felt like you did that. Mm. Is that something that happened or was it just not even said? From since the uh, start of the season, they, they have been going through a difficult time. And, and I feel like the manager coming in, I think he's made a big impact. Mm. But obviously new signings do help, not just me, you know, the five players that have came in. I, f I feel like we've, we've added to that. And what do you think like you've added, sorry? Just like the leadership, you know, with Bernie as well, you, you know, you see, yeah. how, you see how well he's been doing. And I think sometimes when new signings walking through the door, it, it gives you a lift. Like with me, when I was at Atletico Madrid, when I seen Suarez walk through the door, I think, <laughs> well, we've signed a world-class player here, you know, yeah. and mm. automatically it, gives, it gave me a lift. And I knew, you know, we could do something special, especially with him in the side. So, you know, with other players, seeing players come in, it, it gives you a lift. And that's what I experienced. When you were like looking at it from a outsider's perspective towards the start of the season and you're watching, you know, you're probably keeping up on the Premier League. What was your perspective of what is going wrong here? Did you? Um, it's hard to say, really, because... Have the lads given you a bit of... Yeah, they, it, some players have talked to maybe about the the training. Uh -huh. um, you know, obviously they weren't going through a good patch and sometimes that doesn't help as players, but I think... I, I heard they were having a lot of time off and that was one of the main things that they weren't, like mm. the fitness levels and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, because obviously the way you train is obviously the way you play. So mm. if you, obviously if, you, if you're having a lot of days off and you're not training right, you're not going to perform. Um, so I think with, obviously with the gaffer now, because obviously I've worked with him before, I know what he demands in training and mm. is tough. And I think you can see that, especially the Leeds game, you know how they play, the way we, mm -hmm. the way we um, match them for the fitness, of course, and the playing style as well. You know, you've seen the past couple of weeks now how the gaffer has tried to implement his style into the team and yeah. I feel like it's working. Yeah, there was a real like a frustration from the fans where we were like, we just don't know what our plan is in playing. and. You know, like you say, with Leeds, there's an identity. With yeah. us now, there's an identity. But we were all scratching our heads just going... It felt like just boot the ball to St Maximum and hope <laughs> for the best, honestly. And and one thing that I can't accept was, like, um, fitness levels not mm. being where they should be. Like, professionalism, do you know what I mean? That was so frustrating for us because you could see round that hour mark the team would just keel yeah. over um, so it is great when you see Eddie on the training pitch running around like a madman like pointing and shouting yeah. that you're like okay he's trying his best whatever happens you know he's giving 100% what's that energy like like as a, as a coach well from, from when I went, first went with him when I was at Burnley he demands a lot in training you know even in the passing drills he wants 100% every single training session he demands so much from his players and I feel you know now especially with my time at Newcastle the players have I bought into it. Like I said, you've seen for the performances, the fitness levels for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and the passing accuracy as well. Like, yeah, you, even we can really pressing, see a difference in that. Yeah, you know, you, you see him, he's the type of guy where he wants his team to be on the front foot. He wants to be pressing from the front. Uh, the high energy, you see, you know, Joe Linton since I've come in, he's been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. the, the way he's won the ball back, the way he's played, performed. To be fair, all the team as well, but 
that's a, that, that's what he wants. He wants you to be aggressive. Mm. You, see, you see the progress that that he's made since his uh, took charge as manager. I, mm. I'm absolutely loving that attitude change. Mm. Like saying hard work, it, it it for us, it's that feeling of well, we're, win or lose, we can all go away knowing that the lads are giving a hundred percent here, and right. you can see it when you see a Joe Linton like going <laughs> and being this battering ram from the front. He's he's turned it around for ex- him, for example, in a way that I never thought. He was going to. Sometimes you may even need that manager who plays you in a different position or, you know, gives you that f- full of confidence. And y- you see the, the way he's performed, especially since I've arrived. Um, he's been unbelievable. Um, he's powerful. Um, the way he breaks things up. And he reminds me of the way he plays of Moussa Dembele when I play with him at Tottenham. Right. Yeah. He's, you can't get the ball off him. He's unbelievable. I'm relieved for him because it, 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 he had... You know, some footballers they become a bit of a running joke in the Premier League, and yeah. because he was uh, spent, they spent so much money on him, and we were playing him as a striker, as a left winger, and it's like, what is this guy supposed to be? And yeah, like a, like a Dembele, or or even a bit like a, I know this guy's a legend, but yeah, yeah, Tori had that same presence, and you, I, I look at him, I think if you if you keep mastering this sort of um, style of play. The sky could be the limit for him. He he, he can go w- uh, where he wants to. He has the ability to. Be, be a world class player mm-hmm. and I think you know the, the gaffer has got him in that position now where he's like a number 8 where he presses he wins the ball back he you know is, is, is aggressive with, with him without the ball and I feel you know he's showing that and, and fair play to him you know like like you just said he's maybe come under a criticism but I think you know he's starting to show you know what a player he can be mm. what about this uh, Bruno what's his last Gimmerish. name Gimmerish Gimmerish yeah. um, what do you guys call him do you just call him Bruno Bruno yeah <laughs> yeah. he's uh, he's got he's got a bit of a presence about yeah, him yeah. we've seen the highlights on YouTube obviously I, I, like, I haven't watched every game he's played in but, but, but be honest right do you guys go and tune in for the highlights on YouTube and go we've got a good player here no well, I, I, I knew of him anyway before right. he arrived so sure you did I, you watch Liga whatever man. no no yeah, I know yeah, of sure. him no yeah, no honestly yeah, yeah. I know of him and uh, I spoke to the the Brazilian lads as well at, um, at Madrid uh, um, and you know from what I've seen in training as well is is quality it's right. quality yeah it's exciting though, because it's obviously quality. the fans are like saying can't wait, five can't wait yeah but then uh, as Eddie said uh, in his um, his press conference he's like I've got this unit and that three are, are doing so well for yeah. us. It would be so unfair for, for example, for Willick to come off the back of his best performances I've seen him have at Newcastle. What's St. Maximin like? Because <laughs> the guy, he seems mad. I've never seen, honestly, I've never seen anything like it. Um, it's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's, it's <laughs> me- honestly, it's <laughs> mental, even in training. I would imagine you're against him sometimes in training. Yeah, right? I just stand off him. Oh, really? Yeah, I stand off him. Um, we was doing like a possession. It was like a it was like a six v six, and mm. it's the, he had the ball. And he just won't pass to anyone. Like everyone's trying to, I'm literally trying to get the ball off, and I'm diving in trying to tackle him. Uh-huh. And he's just one of those players where like he, he just gets you on the edge of your seat. You know yeah. the things he does, and honestly, I've never seen an honest, never seen anything like him before. Yeah. I, I, I think there's only one person I could compare him to. Triore. I would actually say uh, Tino Asprilla. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this guy, right? But when I was growing up, we had Tino in Newcastle team with Shearer and Les Ferdinand. But he was the most unpredictable person. He on, was also, yeah, a, he's, he's unpredictable off the pitch uh, as well. Yeah, a little bit like sense of humour. Quite some, like, He's a politician now, do you know uh, that? Uh, I'm not surprised. He's <laughs> yeah. just a strange guy. But he was um, Colombian. Um, but yeah, since him, so Maximin, the fans obviously taking him. But there's times where you're saying you wouldn't pass that to anyone. Uh, he wants to be a world class player and he mm. talks about things like a Ballon d'Or but in my head I, I look at him and I go look who am I but I, I, I think I, I, you see what people like Sir Alex Ferguson did with those kind of Cristiano Ronaldo type players who want to take everyone on and you sort of have to guide that down a little bit to get the most out of them so that they do look up and pass is this something that they're trying to sort of work on him with or is yeah, it yeah and, and even I've even I've had conversation with him since I've been there it's mm. Yeah, in games sometimes it's you look at him against Everton, for example. He was incredible, mm. you know. And sometimes in certain areas, he, he, like the one with Murphy, you know, when he played him in, yeah, yeah. Murphy was, you know, it was a great strike, but he didn't score. But yeah, there's sometimes in games where you'll take people on. In yeah, his he's own done the hard box. bit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, that must like as a fan, I'm like, oh my god, this guy is like, he, you love him, but yeah. at that moment, you're like, what the hell are you doing, mate? 
<laughs> no, sometimes I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, but obviously myself in that moment, you don't really, I don't think like that, but uh. yeah, to be fair, I'm, I'm praying don't give the ball away. But, um, <laughs> no, sometimes in, in games, um, sometimes when he can just release it just a little bit earlier, but you know, he, he has that magic where he can just make anything happen. You know, even I don't know what he's going to do, do with it, but uh. he, he doesn't want to change that, the, the way that how direct he is with the ball. But like I said, I spoke to him and he's saying to me, he wants to, you know, win the Ballon d'Or. He wants to, you know, play for his national side and stuff. But and he will reach that. He, he will. He has all the ability in the world. And like I said, he'll, he'll add improvements to his game, like the sense, you know, j just releasing it to get an assist and little things like that. But mm. he's a quality player. Yeah. Um, that Everton game, that was he was, was incredible. Because I was like, I was having a bit of a moan about him before, and I was like, this guy he drives me mental for eighty-eight minutes, and then he'll score, and then I'll have to shut up. But in that game, it was like, yeah. this is the full complete version of you do you see a difference in him when he like, you know for the Everton game mm. could you have noticed on that day you're like oh there's something different in him or does it just happen no I definitely I definitely see something different and you go back to the Leeds game as well mm -hmm. you know he was tracking back he was working hard and you know what I mean if, if you want to win these type of individual awards or play for your national team these are the things that you're going to have to do you know mm. and I can just go back to even in Madrid you know with Simeone if you didn't run you weren't going to play <laughs> You know, you had to run for a brick wall for him. So, and I say to him, and I, I give him examples with certain players, you know, he, he played for him, wingers. And I say, you know, if you want to reach the, the top, you know, you have to do these things. And he knows that. And he does do it, fair play to him. Um, he definitely has been doing it more. No, 100%. Sure. Yeah, since, and you yeah. talk about people like Suarez. Yeah. I mean, if Luis Suarez wasn't too proud to push from the front, then yeah. you, no one can be. And he does. And he's done that his whole career, Suarez and... He, he he obviously knew when he comes to Madrid he knows how they work okay might be different to Barcelona but and he did you know he basically won us a title when we was there last game of the season so yeah he worked hard and to be honest you don't even have a choice when you're working with Simone you have to work oh, you got quite a bit of flack about being our first money signing and yeah. all of that uh, certain radio stations calling you out you know saying <laughs> yeah, oh he's I only know. going for the money I know I know um, what was that like because obviously you know they don't, they're not in your head and yeah. You, only you know your true motivation. And I know my reasons why I came back, you know, to live back in the North for my family and, and of course, the, the, the project as well. You know, I've, I've spoke to, obviously, the manager, the, the owners, the direction that they, they want the club to go in, and it's exciting. So, yeah. for me, it was, it was a no-brainer to, to, to uh, come back to England. You got your coffee there, bro. Um, yeah. From Starbucks, yeah? Posh, you know? We've got the money down here. <laughs> so, right, yeah. uh, not that, when you spoke to the owner... Murdad. Murdad, yeah. What, what, was, what was that conversation like with him? Because he seems a good speaker. No, no, very good people. Oh. Um, no, we're just talking about, you know, the direction that they want the club to go in. We all need to realise it's, it's, we need, we need, it's a building process, you know. The most important thing for us is staying in the league this season. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really want to look too far ahead, but um, no, it's exciting. It's exciting to be involved with the club. And What was the, the main thing that kind of sold you on their vision for the To be honest, they, they didn't sell it to me, mm. I'm being honest with you. For me, it was the most important thing was speaking with the manager because I know him very well. Obviously, I spoke to Carl Wilson, who I'm very close with as well. He was yeah. telling me about the club. But for me, it was important that my family came back to, the, to England, especially the North. And for me, they didn't really sell anything to me being honest with you uh -huh. didn't sell anything um, there must be a little moment where you have a realisation of I'm that first signing of a, a takeover yeah. thing and like there's, that, it's undeniable there's something quite exciting to be about that you symbolise something for that team and you'll always be remembered um, honestly I'm being honest with you I didn't really think of that just excited about the whole thing come back to England playing in the Premier League um, what about playing at St James's because I know there's no, I've, a, I've been there for games and if you're in the crowd it's incredible yeah. but what's it like being on the pitch and it's a full stadium yeah. now it's not like earlier on in the season even the Cambridge one it was electric like especially the Everton game uh, when we went 3-1 up and I even start the start of the game bouncing absolutely bouncing and honestly I've never felt anything like that really you know, you see how passionate the, the the supporters are. You see the buzz around the city, um, and yeah, now it's fantastic. Uh, St James is fantastic. Going back to what was getting said about you when you signed, yeah. you know, you picked Newcastle. Um, I'm sure the money there was probably the same as what it would have been in other clubs that you could have gone to. And in your head, you're thinking about this is what's best for my family. Yeah, I'm just seeing your post about uh, your kids and your wife and how important they are to you. And then you've got someone sort of digging you out 
saying it's for different reasons and all. Does did that on any level piss you off? No, it didn't piss. It, it, it didn't. It didn't. I don't want to swear. Sure, <laughs> no, it didn't annoy me. Um, yeah. That was yeah. a quote, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just um, for me. It doesn't bother me. I had no more reasons why I came back, and money wasn't one of them. Mm. If it was, I would have stayed in Madrid. Because you were still wanted. Simeone yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Had said how uh, yeah. she was staying, didn't he? No, I have a great relationship with him. And it didn't, it's not one of those where it came out of nowhere. He sort of knew anyway that um, if the chance came, I'd like to go back. Madrid didn't want to sell a player halfway through the season. They made that clear. The manager made that clear. But I spoke to the president, the manager, they, they sort of knew. To be fair, there was unbelievable about everything because in reality, they, they didn't, they could have just said no. So, mm. but to be fair, they, they was brilliant with me. Um, and yeah, they just wished me well. But like I said, the manager didn't want me to go. And, you know, it's, I had an unbelievable time there. Um, incredible. Um, but the time was right uh, to come back to England. What's you, it like knowing that Diego Simeone doesn't want you to leave a team? That's pretty wild. <laughs> no, no, it, was, no it, it makes you feel good. Of course, you know, you've got one of the best managers in the world saying he doesn't want you to go. But I had two and a half great years with him. Um, something I'll never forget. And most importantly for me, I learned so much more on and off the field, especially when I, when I finished playing. That, that, that was important for me. I was writing all the sessions down for when I finish. <laughs> no, seriously. You're like, already thinking about coaching? Yeah, 100%. The fact that you are still wanting to be around the team despite having an injury and you're not like, yeah, lads, I'll see you. I'm going, I'm going to Dubai for a month or whatever, which Continue. some players do. I think is really commendable. When the injury happened, I had a good talk with the manager um, and I said like, these things happen you know it's football even though I can't help on the pitch I want to be around the, the boys in the dressing room or the the training ground you know mm. summer presence is still there you mentioned uh, the Cambridge game yeah that was a brutal one <laughs> yeah. it felt like it, in my heart it, that was like probably going down here because it was such a in That's our heads it was such take, a winnable yeah. game and to, to, to like to lose it the way we did was gutting what was it like to be a part of the dressing room after that were you aware of how because it felt like a dark moment, that mm. one. In the Cups, you know, it, these games happen. You know, you've seen over the years, the, 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 the matches that have been played, that big teams do get beat by, by a League One side, League mm. Two side. And that's why, for me, I always respect every opposition who I play, no matter who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and you've seen massive shocks over the years of teams going out. But like I said, the Cambridge game, it was, we could have been falling a up at half time, but you've got to give a lot of credit to their keeper. It was unbelievable, that mm. game. Um, and yeah, they score a goal. Uh, they defend very well. And at full time, you've got to hold your hands up and you know, you've got to give your opposition credit. Cambridge done well. What was the address? The dressing room. room. Like? The dressing room was fine. Obviously, the, the players after the game was, you know, the lads were down, you know. Oh. But, and, and I was speaking to the lads after the game, not just me, but, you know, uh, uh, Jamal as well. He was speaking to them. I was saying like, you know, we've got to let this go because Watford is three days away. And we need to focus on that now because that is a huge game. Well, every game's a huge game, but obviously the situation we're both in, we're next to each mm -hmm. other. Oh. We've got to focus, we've got to let this go now. You, we can't be dwelling about it. We need to, we, we need to push on. How, how's Jamal doing? Because uh, he had a, a really, by his own standards, I think he'd probably admit uh, it was not his best season by any means this so far. He came off social media actually at one point. I don't know if you no, I didn't know that. that. He came off Twitter anyway, from what I understand. And, it just felt like the mood around the stadium had changed towards him. Like it's been a good servant, but it was like, as fans, you're like, just don't know if he's going to be able to carry on for us when it's going so bad. But how how was he? Is because he's the captain, yeah, so yeah. a bit like Harry Maguire is going through a similar period at Man United. When you're the captain, you're the centre back. Pressure is on, and and if you make a mistake, you get punished pretty badly, and it's pretty no, I've obvious. Been there. Cold. No, I've yeah. been there when when I was at Tottenham. You know the last season I was there it's it was I went for a difficult moment when I weren't performing well uh -huh. I, I admit that uh, but no but Jamal's good he's confident he's um, you know he's our captain you know he's a, he's a big leader around the place uh -huh. and he's been performing well so I need to make that clear that he's he's turned it around he, he's been sure. playing he's been playing really well but obviously with the past when he's come off social media I, I don't know anything about that I weren't there obviously but that Everton game for example he was brilliant yeah the own goal I was like oh god not him because looking at him at the start of the season thing going rocky but to be fair to the lad, Sean amazing, great character. amazing yeah. game from him. It was like, this is the, yeah. the Lascelles that we know is in there. Yeah. Um, and I think 
having you next to him and now burn there it yeah. can only no, we have a great understanding me, yeah. me and Jam like even on the pitch and like going back to the the, the, the he couldn't do, couldn't have done anything about that you yeah know just I mean? it's one of those things him, right? where it just hit him and went in yeah you could do nothing about it but it just shows great character from him to keep going and you know obviously it was an own goal by Holgate but it, it would have happened if it wasn't for him the determination from him and the way he attacked the ball uh -huh. You know, and we went one one, and but he's shown great character. But but now he's, he's sound. What, no one problem. of the one of the players I'm always interested in is John Joe Shelby. What uh, a player! Because exactly, like in terms of talent, there's no doubt he's a he's a yeah. quality player. But it's his career. Uh, it probably hasn't been fully realised the potential that he has, in my opinion. And there was a couple of years for Newcastle where it felt like he was going to be sold and now all of a sudden he's rejuvenated and Eddie Howe seems to really be getting the best yeah. out of him. Uh, do, you, do you think there's a reason for that? Um, I can't really comment on it, on, it, on his, his, his journey for where he was mm. and to the, to the places in now, but all I can say is players always, do, always try to do their best. That's a given. But John Joe's had a good career, a very good career. And I love playing with him. You know, mm. I spoke to players who have played with him. Um, you know, Danny Rose would tell me about him as well. Uh, but yeah, I can see what all the hype was about years ago when he was coming through Liverpool and stuff. And even now, he's he's so calm with the ball. You can see that from the career that he's had. Um, I think he's a top, top player, me. Do you know what he indicates to me is how much difference a manager can make to a player? Uh -huh. Yeah. Because I think, you know, not to put Steve Bruce down, but there were times where there were questions over yeah. whether Steve Bruce could motivate the players. It's not your quote, that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> and it looked as if the players' heads would drop him. And technically, there maybe wasn't enough training, those kind of things. I, I felt personally from, there was clearly like fallings out going on. Right. Off, and there was a lot of talk about it. How, how much do you see that relationship between what the manager does and what the, how the players' mood are and those kind of things? Because you seem like you're kind of, you know, you're always positive whether the manager's good or bad or whether the manager's, you know, shouting at you or whatever. Yeah. But do you see that in other players? And do you see that affect certain players in different ways? It can do. Um you know with with this gaffer coming in um like you know more than me with different uh, different players how they perform from when the gaffer weren't here until now mm. i'm guessing you know like joe willock has been brilliant i think everybody's been brilliant i think you can see the standards that i've that i've raised yep um he's changed everything the the mood is totally changed um from what the players have said and the training most importantly the way they train is very demanding very demanding Eddie Howe and yeah. Um, yeah and his training's good as well and like I said you, since he's come in you can see the difference for sure as we're recording this Burnley have just strung a couple of results together annoyingly yeah. um, and it's classic Sean Dyche you yeah. know digging in and, and showing some grit when it's time to fight which you got to respect that um, but then also you've got Everton and Leeds struggling uh, Brentford struggling um, and we've managed to finally get out of that bottom three how how are the boys feeling about the fight ahead and mentally no the lads are feeling good obviously with the results it obviously it helps um not Burnley have you know dug some results out Norwich have as well mm -hmm. I think that's gone on the radar a little bit I think they won seven points out of 12 or something yeah. I think so yeah it's it's that time of the, uh, time of the season isn't it where you know you got to dig deep and you got to you know you got to keep pushing do you guys look at the table I don't really look at the table um I know we can only control what, what we do, you know. Should we talk about uh, Atletico then, Loz? Yeah, I'm kind of eager to talk about Atletico. Yeah. I think they're like, especially when you were there, they were yeah. sort of in a really good moment, as most European managers say. You know, when you first went there, you were sort of leaving a situation behind that what, it wasn't like your very peak of the way people saw you or maybe your performances as well. And maybe those two didn't correlate. What was it like to go to Madrid? Was there a bit of relief that you were a bit like, I'm away maybe now from a lot of the the eye of the English media and I can just concentrate on football because like Brian said it's a bit out of sight out of mind with you you know come the end of the season you're in that La Liga yeah. team of the season yeah. and everyone's going well I didn't know it was this good like, yeah. you know what I mean no because obviously like, like I've, it's out there anyway but I was going for a tough patch mm -hmm. um, towards the end of my career at Tottenham and yeah, it was some sort of, you know, when I knew Atletico Madrid was interested in me, you know, I was buzzing. That's uh, like a FIFA transfer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of people even may say that. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, take myself out of my comfort zone, go and experience it. Um, what about language-wise? No, like, it was, no, at first it was tough, but I had Morata, uh, Burgos, the assistant manager at the time, he spoke English. And when you're going back to the media side, yeah, I'll, I'll admit it, it was a relief a little bit because I was, I was getting hammered. 
And do you know what? I, I admit it, you know, I weren't performing well. Your ability to you, it's your, it's personal. It's tool, yeah. Well, yeah, this is something that is skills that you've honed mm. for years. Yeah. So when someone attacks you on it, although they, they're not thinking this is personal, to you it probably feels very personal. I just feel, you know, like I said before, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, do you know what I mean? I respect that. I have no problem with that. But I think it, it, it was going, it was getting a bit too far. Really? Um, that, what that's way? what I felt. Just mm, the, I agree. Just in the sense of, yeah, I'm one of them players who, you know, I take it on the chin when I know I'm not playing well in, in, in that moment when I wasn't. And I just feel like it was going a bit too far in the, in the media sense. But again, this is... Was there a lot of articles and a lot of... I, I weren't going on social media like you're going on about when you explained to me about uh, uh, Jam, yeah. about not going on it. And... You know, as players, you know, we, you know, we are humans as well, you know, and we you know when players are non non-stop getting attacked, it's yeah, it can be tough. But like I said, when I had the opportunity to go to Spain and out there, it's you just feel free, you know. Oh really? Yeah, it was just like the, the, the Spanish press quite different. Yeah, look, luckily, I, they, they, they like me out there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't read Spanish, it's great. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's it's that's right. It's, <laughs> it's actually doing good. Don't look I'm at the pretending paper. pretending I'm reading the paper, you know. <laughs> I just see Trippier and I'm just thinking, well, yes. yeah. he didn't say muy mal, so yeah. no, that's yeah. very bad, so no, I weren't. What was, very obviously, bad. I mean, we all want to know Diego Simeone. Yeah. Like this guy uh, is a legendary manager and he has this aura about him of almost gangster-like. Yeah, you you'd know? love him. You'd he, love him. He's a cool dresser, passionate yeah. football man. What was it like to play for him and how was his like, team talks and stuff like that? Yeah, to play for him, um, you know, I don't know, I admire him. That, that's, that's what I can say about him. The, the way his teams defend and, um, and stuff and that's what I loved about it. That's what, I couldn't wait to to learn off him. And what sort of things are you learning? Sorry, because you, you're talking about writing down training sessions. And yeah, stuff no, no, of course break. I did. Yeah, yeah. The, the way they train, it's different to English teams. The way, in what way, man? Just different sessions. It's totally different. It's uh -huh. some of the sessions are like, like um, that you're on the goal line, for example, and they're throwing the ball. You want to sprint up across, edit, and then dive, and uh -huh. it's just weird, different training, but it's enjoyable, and mm. that, that's what I loved about it. And the most important thing for me was the way he approached the training for the lads that weren't playing after games. He was incredible. Oh, really? And that's why he has so much respect off everybody. Uh, the way he keeps everybody happy. So he's not just disregard if no, you're not no, playing. No, no, you're no, still important. Yeah, yeah. You're. He's, he's that's the, a clever man management. Yeah, right? it is. And we would be on a bike or doing the gym. Uh -huh. The other players are grafting on the pitch and he's, he's not with us, he's with them. You know, uh -huh. he's taking the sessions, he's getting involved. And for me uh, to see that, it was, it was incredible to be fair. Did he have the hairdryer? Did you see the hairdryer? Um, yeah, I've seen him, I've seen him kick off a few times. Like, yeah? Yeah, I've seen him kick off a few how, times. How, how, what kind of... Not to the extent where he wants to fight you. you no, but I mean? like... It's a bollock and like there's yeah, a long yeah. there's a long um, series of things before fighting as well. Aren't there? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot you can do before. Well, that. I've, I've seen quicker things. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but he's um, yeah, he's, he's 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 dug into players and he's one of those managers where like sorry, what 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 would trigger that from him? What to go to to, to lose it and um, just start shouting, for example. What's his sort of bugbear that really would I make I think if you argue battle with him on the pitch, all right. I've seen him drag somebody off after thirty minutes when I played when they argue battle with him. He said, "No, nah, come off." Well, oh right yeah, so like you're respect. not buying into my yeah, yeah, yeah you're off you shouldn't be there yeah not necessarily you shouldn't be there because you can you can learn that through respect with him oh. talking to him etc but he does, he's one of those where like yeah you might be a world class player but if you're not going to run for me you come off like as a manager if people aren't investing in your ideas then it, it renders you pretty useless in that moment like that's your job so they're basically challenging your whole hmm. ethos worth to be there right which uh, is very difficult with Diego Simeone because also you know you're yeah, you not in the team. Right. <laughs> yeah. And also, obviously, you see, uh, the, the big thing is Atletico Madrid love him. Love so him. it's not like you can turn the press against him or, you know, someone publicly no, will go, we hate this guy. Be, they love him. That'd be impossible. Like, he's, he's so big out there in Spain. Um, What's it like when you stand on the sideline and you're the players and you see him sort of doing that? balls thing <laughs> he's, done few, he's done that a few times yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's done that a few times what's it like when you see him do that because he it's must be mental. like it's yeah just, he's just different it, it, like he's just different like when you see him on the touchline honestly when we're training that's how he is in training like when, oh, right. when we're doing passing drills um i don't know if you've seen his documentary yet Maybe no you know, he's good it. yeah you need to watch it he's, oh wow it, and they would say everything about him but even in, when you're doing passing drills and the standard's not good 
you, you know about it. You know what I mean? It's, I've been on the end of a few of them as well, so I know how it feels. I think it's so important to be able to handle that and to accept, like... You need to be not, mentally strong. Yeah, yeah he's definitely. not digging you out to he's trying humiliate to help you. you. No. He's trying to make you the best version of you, yeah. which is, like, why you've come to Newcastle and mm. we're all like, God, this kid's world class. And it's through hours of that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I've worked with him one-to-one... I don't even want to give you a number, but hours. Mm. Just me and him, just working after training. It's good that he's got me into some positions where I, in, throughout my career, I thought, I never would have thought of that. Well, the role of me. the right back is, I mean, we see the, the Trent Alexander-Arnold yeah. uh, season. Reece James. Yeah. How Reece James instrumental walks, yeah. these kind of players can be now versus 20 years ago mm. when it was, you know, Gary Neville overlapping Beckham was seen as revolutionary and now it's it's a whole new thing. Are you looking at the evolution of your position and trying to incorporate more of these things into your game now? Yeah, I'm always, even at the age that I'm at now, I'm always wanting to learn. I've learned so much off Simeone, just even like when I've been in his meeting room or in his office and he's got his board up and he's telling me, listen, you go in this position here and he would get nowhere near you and you, know, you just think to yourself and when I've actually done it in the game I think I, I never would have thought that you know yeah. and he's, he's tacti- tactically he's a genius um, yeah he's there's so much to love about him. It's quite creative isn't it in a sense like you've got to be creative and looking for spaces and stuff it's weird yeah. see. it's only like five yards six yards away from the opposition mm. and that makes such a difference these little these little moments in games can be a, a big difference and um, it's not just myself, you know, you, you know, you've got people like Joao and the way they're playing now and he's tactically, he's, he, like I said, he's a genius. When, when, when he gives you, uh, gives you praise because yeah. his standards are so high, how does that feel? Good, yeah, it yeah. does feel good because you know the manager is and you respect him and when he's complimenting you, you know, it's coming from him and you just mm. feel good, you know, and yeah, he's, um, and he does that to his players, he, there was one moment where going for the title and Correa missed the goal. Um, it was a big moment as well because Madrid just was one point ahead of us and the, the chance that he missed, Correa started, it was, it was so close. He should, he should have scored, mm-hmm. but he didn't. And he was crying after the game and the manager pulled him and he'd done a training session with him and it's in the documentary as well where he was working with him on his own where the ball comes in and he took it on his outside of his foot and toe poked it and the goal that he scored against Valo de Lid, last game of the season it mimicked the exact move he did with the manager and he scored <laughs> you know and he's good like that you know and um, yeah he's just good uh, a really good one to one manager yeah I feel like the best managers always come across as alright they can they can bollock you but also they've got this father figure feeling to them does he have a bit of that do you think yeah definitely and he doesn't he's one of the managers the way he doesn't have his favourites you know, oh, right. he's one of those managers where he treats everyone the same. You know, it doesn't matter if you're Luis Suarez or Kieran Trippier or if you're a youth team player. He's unbelievable. The, youth, the kids as well who come up and his son plays as well. His son trains with us all the time. Yeah. Um, and Any yeah, good? he's a good player. Really? Yeah, he's a good player. And yeah, he, on the pitch, he, you won't even think he's his son because he he lays into him when, when, when he's not doing things right so I bet, I bet you it's worse for him a little bit so, yeah I think so you know I know think I mean? so but yeah even on his documentary you see how you know family man he is yeah. you know with his sons and daughters and he, he lived just behind me as well when we was in Spain because we had this complex and you just see him flying around on his bike and stuff it's mental like you know he'll just chat with you you know playing with my, like messing about with my kids and stuff playing football with them and that's just the type of guy he is so sorry you're in a complex then. yeah so it's like um no, no. You ever been St George's Park, for yeah. example? So you, St George's, imagine that, but bigger, right? And so like centre parks, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically, right. And there's loads of houses on there with lakes and stuff like that, and oh. that's where like uh, I lived and my teammates and Real Madrid players and yeah, like singers and you know. Right. So it wasn't just like a, a an Atletico Madrid no, thing no, where no, you're no. all right. You all live near the manager. You yeah, can keep yeah. an eye on you fifty feet away. You're having a barbecue on a Sunday, and he's going two hot dogs there. That's no, the, but that's right. another good thing. There's nice weather out there, and you know, one of the boys will say, "I oh, want to come around to my house," and you just a little. Go out your back gate, walk to his house, barbecue. Wow. That'd be great, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. You talk about the uh, the culture of like everyone's the same. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really healthy way to manage a football team. I think fans get frustrated where it feels like it doesn't matter what someone does in the eyes of this manager. Like Gareth Southgate, for example, has been accused of having his favourites. It's, 
I, we want to see people picked on form, on merit, on how well they're playing. Do you prefer that system or do you think some players need that? No matter what you do, you're playing every game. The, no, I feel like some, no, some, some, everyone's different. Every player's different. And, you know, I, I played with players, you know, um, who sometimes need that arm around them, you know, and that's normal. It is, but, you know, like I said, players are different. And, but the way Simeone worked it was, you know, everyone's, everyone's the same. You know, like I said, you, you, we have big characters in, in that dressing room, you know. Um, but yeah, like I said, a player needs their arm around them, you know. Once, w w uh, you know, sometimes. So, did you get that at Spurs when you were going through your rough patch? I'm going to be honest with you, not really. Who was manager Poch? Poch, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was more like you know, I spoke to a few of my teammates at the time, and to be fair, we had a great team, then great set of lads, mm. Mm. unbelievable dressing room, like. Um, but you know, Poch, don't get me wrong, is unbelievable manager, and he's done a lot for me. Of course, he has. You know, mm. I, I, I respect him. That's normal. But I felt like there could have been just a little bit more. You know, you know what I mean? Like, right. Because it, mm. it felt like in that scenario, uh, towards the end of Poch's time there, you weren't the only one who felt that way about Poch. It did feel like he'd lost the dressing room from the outside looking in. And now we're in a situation where Spurs players are coming under so much scrutiny because Conte, so soon after arriving, has gone, four defeats in five, that doesn't happen to me. And kind of pointed the finger at the players and gone look you've had Poch you've had Mourinho and you've now got me three pretty world class yeah, yeah, managers no, yeah. top ten in the world and, yeah. and, and we're all having the same problem which is um, and this is the way he's sort of portraying it yeah. in a roundabout way saying look I'm not the problem here these lads mentally just don't have it in them to do what I'm asking I guess first off how would you feel if you were having the finger pointed at you in the way those players are? No, we're players, you know. We should be given everything on the pitch. I'm not saying they wasn't, because I know they were. Um, but obviously, he's going to be frustrated because, you know, they put an unbelievable performance in against Man City, where it was brilliant. World class, yeah. But you got to give Burnley credit, because that's no easy place to go, mm. no, no matter what team you are, mm. you know. They'll always give you a good game, so... You know, obviously, he's Tottenham were full of confidence at the time, of course, beating Man City and then going into Berlin, they lost 1-0. But yeah, you know, the manager obviously has his reasons. Obviously, I don't know what they are, but he must have his reasons. But I can tell you the players, the Tottenham players would have been given 100%. It's just, you know, you've got to give credit to Berlin as well because they're a tough place to go. It's a tough place to play. But I guess yeah. it's, it's that point of four defeats in five for Spurs. It's yeah, rotten. but the Premier League's you not easy. The yeah, but the, Spurs. Pre the Premier League's not easy though. Yeah. Like... Yeah, I've got, they've lost four in five, but the Premier League's relentless. It's mm. it's not easy, no matter who you play now. Like you, you've, you've got you've got a battle on your hands. Add Conte into that, and it's even more relentless. That's part of it. Is <laughs> yeah. like you, you've played under a really um, a really intense manager in yeah. Simeone, and a lot of people accuse the likes of um, Simeone and uh, Conte of exhausting the players, like the the emotional exhaustion in there. Is that possible? Is that like what is your reaction to that or do you think that's just something we see we're like oh he's tired because he plays for context yeah I think I, I don't believe in that because like even when I was there you know we didn't really get many days off but that's because obviously it was in Europe or whatever uh, obviously La Liga and stuff but the way we trained was we have a guy there like he's called Profi Ortega honestly have a, have, have a look up on him he is ridiculous like the training that we did and the way it was managed the way we train it was incredible, but no, I don't really believe in that. I right. Just, I, I, I don't believe in that because Simeone was relentless every day. Uh -huh. But for me, you know, I wasn't getting tired of it. I was, I was excited, if yeah. I'm honest with you. Well, yeah, because if someone else is motivated and, and you know, given you that enthusiasm, it's infectious. That's where you get the Jurgen Klopp's and them who, who push it and push it and push it. And, you know, it did work out for you. You obviously yeah. won La Liga. Was that the highlight of your career in terms of team achievement? Yeah, definitely. I think um, obviously winning the league on the last day of the season, you know, obviously Real Madrid as well. There was, so if we lost the game uh, or even drew the game and Real Madrid won, we would have the same points, but they would have won the title on head-to-head. Uh, oh, head-to-head. Head -head. Oh, in La Liga, they so did head-to-head, yeah. Yeah, so we, they beat us at their place. Fuck. So when Valo de Lid scored, we were thinking, oh, no way, this can't be happening. Went 1-0 one, one down, half-time. And this is the good thing about the manager, he weren't 
panicking he was calm you know he was like we'll win the game because after Christmas we weren't allowed to say good morning that's what the manager said we had to say champions wow. from Christmas so he set the stall for the players at Christmas so we weren't allowed to say good morning he was like we're going to be champions that's all he wanted to all the physios everybody all the like physios that. coming in um, every game from from Christmas all wearing a Let's Go Madrid shirts the physios the every staff member when was walking in there was there was uh, banners in the dressing room like I say you see the documentary you'll see it there was banners thousands like pictures of you when you was little you no know, little things like that wow. and it was incredible you know and the psychology of this is fascinating but it's, it does make a difference absolutely um, everyone wants to feel valued yeah and even for the like I said the players that weren't playing the players that weren't in the squad they all had photos up they had it was just uh yeah, and winning the last uh, uh, last day of the the season, Correa scores, and then yeah, and then Suarez is sprinting through, and you know, I I, I knew it was going to score. <laughs> well, I was praying it was going to score, <laughs> and then yeah, he put it away, and yeah, we, and we won the league. If you've got so, your uh, you know career hopes and dreams on a striker going through yeah. he's got to be up there with yeah. people you'd back yeah like. but when he was spinning through so I don't know if he's seen the goal mm -hmm. so he's just past the halfway line mm -hmm. and obviously he doesn't know what's behind him but you have Marcos Llorente he's screaming like solo so, like, you're alone mm -hmm. obviously Suarez didn't know and he says in his documentary if Marcos wasn't saying that he would have took the shot off early uh. because he's shouting you're alone then yeah he took his time and put it what, away what was it like when you you get that medal around your neck. You know, mm. you've been you've been working twenty years for this moment. Yeah. And you're champions. And and not and there's something special in my head about you won La Liga, but not with Barcelona or Real Madrid. Yeah, so yeah. again, it's even more special, you could argue. How did that feel? Obviously I've never won anything. Well, the the, the trophy will go with my youth cup medal. So that's <laughs> not bad, is it? <laughs> Fair play. So uh yeah, no, it was it was uh, obviously celebrating with the boys and getting on the bus because we had to get a coach journey back, which was about two and a half hours, and it didn't really kick in. I, I didn't know how to feel really because it's my first title. It was it was strange. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, I was buzzing. Um, yeah, it was just was it overwhelming in that. Yeah, sense? definitely, definitely overwhelming because it's my first my first title. Um, obviously, playing in Spain, I think it started to kick in really when. You know, I come back to England. I met the England team, and you know, everyone's con like saying congratulations and stuff. And I feel that's you know when I took a step back and thought about it more. Uh, Was there a low afterwards? Because some people describe when you have such a high mm, right. that your brain naturally will have to like come down and write itself again. Did you feel a little bit of that or not? No, I I didn't personally because oh. when I obviously won the title and you know celebrated my my wife and kids, and then I met all of England literally straight away. Oh wow! So I was buzzing. So because. I love going away of England, do you know what I mean? And yeah. the Euros was, was coming. Um, and yes, yeah, so I, I met the England team. So yeah, I, I wasn't on a low because I was so excited to, to see the boys and uh, yeah, and train with them. You didn't get the chance to go around like Madrid then. You really no, just flew cool. away straight away. Yeah, but when we traveled to uh, Valladolid, there was thousands of fans who drove all the way up. Wow. So when we come out, we was going to the bus and then you could see the, the supporters literally 100 meters away on the car park and then as soon as they saw us that was it like the, the, the police couldn't control them they all sprinted and then the, the players just put for sack it and just sprinted to them and yes. then it was going off like that, nah, is, so it was that is incredible no nah, it was good and then obviously you're going straight into an england camp which yeah. is um you know possibly one of the most hopeful england camps i think in our lifetime right yeah i mean well we should do the we should do both of the England tournaments right. you're involved in because you played a massive role, obviously, in the first, uh, in 2018. So, yeah, let's rewind to that because you scored a magical goal. It kind of took people by surprise as well. Like, you like you are like, you're like an unlikely hero that sort of just pops up. And, that, and now people are more aware of it, obviously, at Newcastle. A right back taking a free kick, though, in a tournament. Like, it's not often that you sort of sit there. It is most people in their mind, they go back to the Beckham or yeah, that, yeah. that kind of that you, you image became, of the team. You became a hero in that, in, that, in that one moment. Everyone was like, good old Kieran Trippier. <laughs> good old trips. <laughs> no. I think the way, the way it went, I think, all the players in, in that in that group when we went to the World Cup I think you know they deserve huge credit they're, they're all heroes you know mm. um, because it's tough going away to a tournament and I go back to the players that say didn't play but then the when you're going away for so long that you know it's so important that we're all together because you're away for within well, the Euros I think it's like five and a half weeks and you see some players that I'll give you a guys like Conor Cody was 
you know, I, I don't think he played one minute in the Euros, for example, but mm. he was incredible around the place. All right, yeah. So positive, trained relentless every day, didn't complain once, and, you know, that shows a great character that he is. You know, he's a great guy anyway, but you, you need a full team like that, and, you know, and, and England have that. Yeah, the morale and the team spirit seems... No, that's, it's incredible, that's thing man. Like, togetherness. You yeah, know, it's incredible. You said you watched some of the kickoff highlights. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We were highly critical of Southgate yeah. because we want to win the World Cup and we think we could have done. And it's it, it it's frustrating, but at the same time, i got to give it up to him because for whatever whatever he's done, there, there's this bond and this unity amongst you all, which in the past, I think, pros have admitted, if you were a Chelsea player, you'd click with them, Man United click with them. Yeah, cool it, them yeah. it wasn't yeah, the yeah. same way. Is, it, it, is that right? Do you no, think it's correct, different yeah. now? 100%. I think Gareth deserves huge credit from when he took over and t until the position that we're in today mm. you see the you definitely see the progress is there f from when he first took over like from my first game against France my debut from me being involved from then till now I see huge huge progress mm. and there's none of that United table Liverpool table it's more alright oh, um, you know the kit man will sit with you or yeah whoever all the staff are mingling with the players and that and, and that's important do you know what I mean and he's and he's slowly but you know he's done everything um, the real togetherness and that comes from him you know the meetings that we've had and you know what it means to represent England um, you know and to connect with the supporters as well I feel that is important mm. you know the players the team the supporters are you know connected again and I feel that's happened going back to that goal well, I mean that was such a meaningful goal in your career I don't think yeah. you'll ever score anything potentially I mean hopefully for Newcastle when we win the league hopefully. But, um, you might never score a goal that's quite as like shown around the world as that like that would have been seen by tens of millions billions of probably yeah, yeah, like billions of people crazy what was it like to score that yeah an incredible feeling to be honest with you um, I don't I know Walker's quick but I don't think I've ever run faster than him in my life <laughs> <laughs> when he was chasing yeah. um, no it was a uh, a great feeling to score for my country yeah. something to, to play for my country is something that I've always dreamt about um, I know all the players say that but they do truly truly mean that because yeah. it's one of the best feelings ever um, but yeah to score the goal uh, was a best feeling and the way the game went you know we, we performed especially the first half I thought it was incredible I think we could have been freeing a lot yeah so we frustrating freeing a lot but that was the frustration I think from the fans is like, was we, yeah, we felt so. like that was that was actually a, a we didn't get to the final that year, but it felt like that was an easier potential win of a tournament than what the for following sure. one was. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because so many of the big hitters weren't there. Mm -hmm. um, but Croatia are a good side then. Oh, course, absolutely. You know, like, uh, they're yeah, decent. Modric, uh, Rakitic in the midfield. and Just name an itch and it's there, basically. <laughs> basically, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The experience yeah. The, that, that they've got, you know, it's... It, it, it felt know, like, like that's what won them the game. Can I ask though, you know, what is it that means that you're over the free kicks? Can sit, no, no, yeah. I don't mean that in a no, disparaging no, no, no. way, but I mean like, how I'll does be, a right back from yeah. the team yeah end up in that squad with that talent and they go yeah I think Kieran should take him to be fair it's no at the time it was me and Youngie who, who was uh, hitting the free kicks and training and stuff um, and I just felt I don't know I just felt confident I, I just said to Youngie I'll take this one and Youngie said yeah no problem and I just felt confident um, you know and yeah it's just if you feel confident and you feel like taking it like John Joe when was playing Leeds you know I wanted to take it but John Joe I, you know, I'll, I'll take it. No problem. You take it, and he scored. You know, you you seem to have a really good state of mind for a sportsman. Like, the, I think it's it's so. I mean, we've seen like fighters like Anthony Joshua lately seems to be going through a bit of a lull. Yeah, uh, it, that is such an important thing in sport. Uh, have you worked on that, or is this just something that's just always no. been there? Like, I, I keep going back to it, but my experiences in Spain, you know, have, have changed me completely. Mm. Changed me completely, and that's from the manager. Like, uh, like honestly I can't speak highly enough of him he, he, he's that good um, wow. do you mean just uh, just in terms of a football sense or do you mean no, in a personal just a person, as well just how, how does that happen if he's your football manager like you know a lot of people go to work don't share a lot of things with their managers clock out five uh, and, no, you know, Friday night again leave. I've seen him out of football loads of times like I said around the complex where we lived and yeah just, I've had conversations with him not just about football about my life in general because he, he's one of the managers I mean, he needs to know you he needs mm. to know everything about you um, come on we've got to sleep together yeah. <laughs> you like. you I love the idea of you two camping in the complex yeah, going yeah, to yeah. each other's back garden <laughs> no but he's he um, sounds amazing to be he fair, is man. honestly he's, he's unbelievable mate like, is that what you aim for to, as your own coach or do you think you like what's your style of for me it's the team 
it's the players that are not playing as well um, you know make sure everybody's being treated the same you know there's no favourites there's nobody who thinks is better than anybody, anybody else just keep all, and, and that's how you're going to succeed as long as you're all on the same page you buy it into what the manager wants you'll succeed I've, I've never heard a player come into Newcastle and talk like the way you do about the team the team the team like it was in so many interviews on post-match you were like I'm here for my teammates on and off the field yeah. you know I'm here and immediately the fans were like this guy's uh, he's using his head a lot like you, you do think about what is the best thing for everyone yeah. and not just about you and you appreciate that as a fan mm. yeah but I'm not I'm not just saying it for just the sake of saying it I could tell so it's easy for me to come out in an interview and tell everybody what, what they want to hear I'm not about that mm. so if you're not all on the same page the players if somebody thinks they're, they're better than somebody else or whatever egos you're not going to succeed in the position that we're in we all need to be together with the position that we're in we all need to fight we want to stay in the league you know I don't want to be playing in the championship I don't want to go down but I believe in myself and the team otherwise I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't so for me it's you know get our heads down tomorrow hopefully we'll get the three points and uh, and kick on yeah take it a game at a time it is awkward it, I've never really thought as much about it as the way you're talking about I, you know because as fans we just look at who's starting who, who am I yeah, relying yeah. on today but the vibe around the, the club is so important and obviously as I say at the start of the season I've never seen it as low as that in my whole life I think in terms of like it just felt like there wasn't a lot of friendliness there amongst the boys it felt quite toxic it, didn't it it, yeah. it, it felt like like I say, that from the top down with Mike Ashley and the situation that went on there, it felt like what you're saying about unity and, and everyone sharing the same, being on the same page, right from the top down, it wasn't like that. Has any, have any of the lads mentioned about Mike Ashley and that whole era and what he was like? And They haven't gone really into much detail. To be honest, I've not even asked really? because that's gone now. Mm, you thank know. God. No, no, but I don't mean that in a bad way, but... We do. Yeah, but that's in the past, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Never really spoke to anybody about it. It's more, you know, what what could happen, what, you know, how, how we can progress, you know, with the new manager, the the, the new owners, etc. So, to be honest, I think nobody's even thinking about that now. Uh, wow. There's a lot of talk right now about Newcastle have got all this money and we're going to buy this player and that player and the other. You're obviously vi envisaging one point in your career you may be a football manager, what what is the sort of thing that you'd look at now if you were in control of our transfers in terms <laughs> yeah, of no. like not a shopping list but like what kind of players do you think we should be going out and buying because i think a lot of people expected us to go to the robinho route yeah. and the man city thing where we go and get all these massive names and actually it's been what i would consider to be fairly sensible signings no if if i had the money i would do exactly what we've done because mm. you got to think of you know obviously the supporters of you know like, like you guys you've, you've deserved this you know mm. they're, they're pushing on now shall we say and you know it, you can't go and buy an Mbappe or whoever you know we're, uh, we're in the position that we're in so the signings that we've made you you know it's you know the characters you know all five of us that we've been in this position before where Newcastle are at now mm -hmm. and I think it's good signings clever signings because we know every single one of us are going to fight mm for the position that we're in so and it's all about building you know I think you know and Matty's done unbelievable Woods is you know I know he's not scored but you know people don't feel, think about what he's doing off the ball mm -hmm. he works so hard for the team it must be hard for him as well not no, getting that goal yet no, because as a striker it's what you're judged on it is no it is and I understand that but from what the most important thing for us players is knowing what he is doing for us mm. and he's doing so much for us you know, he's, he's winning his aerial duels, he's winning the battles, he's bringing people into play. Yeah, of course, he would love to score and, and that will come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but what he's doing for us off the ball, his defensive work, his, his running stats, not many people would look at that, but mm -hmm. just try and look at everything that he's Do actually doing. Do you look doing. at a lot of stats? Does that help bring that up? Yeah, he's mad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so games and um, running stats as a team, individuals, uh, high speed running diesel excels wow. um, he's good on things like that and he has a good team around him um, good nutritionist and everything with him who who help you and we've got a, they've got a good team there and I heard Bruce diets. was just feeding them chips and gravy so that's a relief that was my bacon did you say <laughs> you don't mind to go to the toilet quickly yeah, yeah, yeah you go for it thank you
Obviously, um, you went to the Euros 2021. I was supposed to be 2020, but obviously what happened happened. And you weren't in the same role. You played a different role. Yeah. Uh, came on left back at one point, then <laughs> set up uh, Shaw's goal in the final. Yeah, and you know, was uh, you, I think you played? Do you play three games in that tournament? One or the other? You're yeah, on then off, off then the on. Then, yeah, yeah, right. You're on and off. Weren't yeah, you? I was on like in and out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and kind of like what you were saying before. You like it was important for you then because you weren't starting yeah. to have that positive attitude. Did you yeah. see that as part of the responsibility of what you were doing? Or yeah, because. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm up against so much competition, so yeah. it's, it's difficult. Right. Uh, I've never known it be like this. That's crazy. the most competitive yeah. place, right? I'd say, so. I'd say so. In the, in, in the squad, yeah, right. squad, yeah. The yeah. amount of like England back in the day, it was like strikers. We had like Shearer, Andy Cole, Ian Wright, Ferdinand, Fowler, yeah, Sheringham. Yeah. Now it's right backs. Sessions. We've yeah, got like bad. ten class right backs. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. How are you guys are looking at each other? Is everyone sort of going? Good to see you. Glad you could come. You know? <laughs> no, it's not, it's not like that really. Yeah. It's obviously me and Walks have known each other for since it was like under eighteens in England anyway. Wow. So we've known each other for ages. Uh, and obviously it was at Tottenham together, but obviously with Reese at the time and uh, and obviously Trent, we all have a great relationship anyway. I know I'm not I'm not just saying that, but we do, you know, mm. and that's the the chemistry we have away with England. Everybody gets on with everybody, regardless of who's in each other's position, but um, yeah, it's, it's difficult because there's so many right backs now. Um, but no, that's good. You know, you need competition. You want you want competition. So you know, you, you're on your toes every day in training. You know, you, you want to you want to be showing why you should be playing, mm -hmm. and that's what every single one of us do. We're competitive. Does Gareth chat to you? So you know, when you first get there, do you get individual chats with him? Do you get group chats with him? And like, who's going into how much you'll play? What's your, who's managing your expectation as an England player? Well, for me, it's not like or anybody else. He don't come and tell you you're going to play like as soon as you go to camp. It's obviously you need to train well. So, but no, he's brilliant though. He does have individual meeting with the players and that's what's so good about him. His man management is brilliant mm. with everybody, not just myself. He's done a lot for me on and off the field. And, you know, I respect it. I respect that and I respect him. But um, no, he's a, he's a quality man manager and a manager as well. Him and Steve Holland have a great chemistry together. Um, in training and everything but um, no nah, he's every meeting that he does individual as a group it's it, it's, it's good how, how long before an England game do you find out whether or not you're playing because in these tournaments yeah. they come thick and thick fast and fast yeah yeah now, sometimes it's more like probably day before a game where you're doing like the, the set pieces and stuff like that uh, mm. you know the team um, yeah and obviously you do the set pieces wherever you're up against and then get ready but you need to you need to make sure that you're always ready to play because anything can happen. How did you get so good at set pieces? <laughs> no, he's, uh, I won't say I'm the best. You're definitely high on the list, though. <laughs> you know, I, I always do my best, but it's more. Do you from practice when I, a lot? Or? Yeah, especially when I was younger, when I was at Man City, coming through the youth team, I had a great coach called uh, Steve Ayer. Uh -huh. um, he done a lot with me, but it's just all about practicing and having that responsibility to take them. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's just something that I've always worked on even now. It's pretty wild. I mean, and, and then, so you're in the tournament and he comes to you and he goes, left back. Yeah, um, we, we done a meeting. Um, funny enough, I can't remember, I'm trying to think now, was it, I'm trying to think was the meeting when he named the team that was gonna play before we did set pieces. Anyway, uh, my name come up, walks his name come up, so I thought, all right, I won't be playing. And Kieran Trippier come up. So I think, oh, where am I playing? Eh? Mm. <laughs> I thought I was playing up front with him. Three left. <laughs> yeah. Have, you, have you played left back much before that? It was more, I played there for Tottenham before. Um, you know, I, when somebody's gone off, you know, Pochettino pushed me there. Um, but no, you know, it's, I think it's more Gareth really who's, who's put them there on, on a more free, a frequent basis really. And no, nah, for me, I don't mind it. Uh, like I said, play me anyway if I can help the team I'll help the team mm -hmm. if it's on the bench or fr from left back or right back and he actually made quite a big deal about this he was like you know afterwards he was like if I, if that had gone wrong I'm dead. it's clearly yeah. yeah I'm dead like as in it's all on me there's no you know people can't share that responsibility because I've clearly put someone who is not in their right position or natural yeah. position out of position yeah, so did you feel that like I can't let him down, or did you, were you not even thinking about that honestly I won't even think about that because us players and Gareth we all not just me all the players know they'll give everything for the shirt and for him um, and for me it's I played there he's, he's, he's had the trust in me for, to play against Belgium there and uh, and I feel like I can do a job there obviously I'm not a natural left back but I can I can do a job there and um, and yeah it, it worked out we won we won the game and yeah, everything was fine what does it feel like to lose 
the Euro final? It was really tough to take, obviously, with playing at Wembley, the the, the way everything went, the whole tournament. Um, yeah, and to lose it on penalties was, you know, it hurt us, of course, and, and as you guys, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, it was, it was tough to take, really. It was tough to take. That was... It was probably one of the few things that could ever bet uh, the uh, Atletico uh, medal. That yeah, 100%. Yeah, Winning like, a trophy for England, 100%. Yeah. This is the thing, though. You guys have gone further than anyone has gone before uh, since 66. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be taken from that. What was the mood like afterwards? Obviously, you were low, but what kind of things were you guys saying to each other? Because some people, I feel like you are quite a strong guy. You can take it in your stride. Other people, maybe it's not so much. So yeah, was there anyone who you remember taking it worse and what people would say to them? Or? Everyone's got a different, different character. Obviously, I was, I was gutted, mm. uh, as, all, as everybody was. Um, yeah, it was just a bit... It weren't silent, you know, um, a few of the... Uh, experienced pros like Harry Kane, Maguire, you know, who said a few things in the dressing room, mm. um, which was which was really good. I think in that specific moment, it was it was good for them to step up and the way they did and ex and do the speech. Mm. Um, yeah, it was tough. It, it, it was tough to take because we was there, you know, penalties. Um, but no, you see the like I said, you see the progress that we've made from the uh, World Cup to the Euros. Made huge steps. We've got to be proud, you know. The most important thing for us, we, we've connected again with the supporters and, and that was massive from back in the day to now. I feel that like we have that good chemistry, you know? Yeah, the feeling important. has definitely changed. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we, I, I think I remember us sitting around this table when we were watching and, and us all saying like, this is the first time in a long time where we, could, we feel, because you guys are millionaires and money doesn't like change you completely, but it makes you feel further away to us. And I know that you seem a lot more keen in not being so untouchable and unreachable uh, from what you've said to me before the podcast, but some footballers, they feel like fictional almost. Up there, like yeah, godlike, just, yeah. And, and, and it felt like the first time in a while where the, the lads became mm. the lads and a bit like us and living our dreams and not... The vibe changed. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's important. Um, and we felt that as players as well. Obviously, it's, it's brilliant for us to play the games and then we win and then we see like you guys celebrating do you know what I mean and the supporters throwing pints in there and mm. we feel good you know that we're yeah. that you guys are celebrating and, and enjoying the moment and it was a great journey you know England was you know the, the whole country was, oh, it was fire, crazy man. weren't it you yeah. know and it, like the same in Russia when was there as well when you know high part when all the pints have going up and everything like that. it's mad but it's good to see and it's, yeah. we that's what we want we want to put smiles on people's faces and um, you know be winning games for for all our all our supporters to be celebrating yeah. Um, so yeah I think that I think we've we've connected really well over the years funny story right mm -hmm. uh, we were on a uh, we were we were we had a sponsorship back then in 2018 where we we only got as many games from the sponsor as England got. So I knew every time England won, we got an extra X amount of money. Yeah. And it was in the thousands of pounds, you know? It was keeping the business going at the Ab time. Absolutely, right. right? So when that, when <laughs> when that, that free kick goes in, went, I was on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? Um, so it wasn't just uh, making people happy. It was literally keeping us in a job. Literally, like, you know? yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks for that. You mentioned Harry Kane and, and him giving mm. that speech and, you know what a what a player. And Maguire as well. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, and Maguire. Sorry, but uh, on Harry Kane, like uh, he's he's such a player, but um, he, he's had all this focus around his career, especially in the last year and a half when that yeah. big move nearly happened. Um, what's your thoughts on a club keeping a player who openly wants to go somewhere else? Well, H. Hey, first, I'll say is the most professional player I've ever played with. Right. So. You know, obviously, it it didn't happen in the summer, but he's one of those where he's not going to throw his toys out of the pram. That City performance was pretty special, wasn't it? Yeah, and that, that's what he does. You know, people look at his goals or when he doesn't score, for example, when the media was on his back a little bit, um, people need to look at how he brings people like Sonny into play when he drops deep and he's mm. playing them diagonal passes and... It's just such a good player. Are you guys, um, so even when you're not together, obviously in England camp, you're obviously still mates, everyone's got yeah, each other's yeah, phone course. numbers. Are you all in different WhatsApp groups with each other or um, chatting or what? I have a, we have a couple of WhatsApp groups with lads from England. Um, 
And yeah, before we played Pix, I was texting him as well. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> so he, me, he, we're he like gets really, it, he? like me and Pix are you know, best mates. Like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, Pix are so close, like a little T Rex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you see, you can't laugh at that. I'm he can't sorry, do anything. Yeah, but it's hilarious. See, the, did you see the dinosaur someone had in in the crowd? I've seen a photo with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's a great guy. Yeah. You know, I, I know you're in Newcastle and he's yeah, yeah. but he's he's a great guy. Like and yeah. Um, yeah, he's one of my best pals. But yeah, I was texting before the before the games leading up to it and that, and you know he he, he took my goal well. To be fair to him, I was speaking him after it, and yeah, he is now basically their representative in the Premier League. And whenever he comes to St James's, I've never known a player take so much shit in mm-hmm. my like. Credit to him, like, because it no, was it's because in goal as well, yeah, yeah, you're under pressure as it is. <laughs> you're also stuck there, so it's not like you can, you know, you're going up and down the yeah, line, yeah, you're in yeah. front of like 10,000 people, yeah. Pix is a great guy, Pix is one of those where he loves banter. Some of the boys, like the Longstaff brothers, was was speaking to me about like uh, the banter Pix has with the Newcastle fans mm-hmm. and stuff, and they, they're always on him when he's there. And I, oh and I, God. even when I was playing, when he's like, every time he had the ball and stuff, I've never heard anything like it. But, yeah. and he, he gives it back, you know, he has banter, you oh, know, yeah. and, and a fair play to picks, like, you know. How conscious of you are, are you of that as a player? Like, can you hear people in the crowd or are you sort of like, it's all just one thing? Now, to be fair, like, when the, when my teammates, when the lads would tell me about, like, listen to this sticky gets. So, honestly, when I was playing, I was like, Every time he got the ball, so I was trying to list like closely, like you zone, like in games. Sometimes you don't realize the crowd's there. Uh-huh. So I was trying to focus in. Like every time he got it, my word, like he was getting some brutal. Like, every time he got the ball, and like there was one in the <laughs> one in the second half, I think it was. Yeah, second half when he he's like tried to side volley and he shanked it. Oh yeah, and he went out. Remember it, and then the centre half tried to kick in. He kicked yeah. out for yeah, a corner. It was hilarious. And then I spoke to him after the game about it, but he was just like you know just laughing and joking about it you know he's had the odd nightmare at Has St it? James's like it's up I remember one game where he couldn't handle it and I'm I think, laughing because I, I think I will I'm so close to him I can picture it. <laughs> and it, it all went right it all went this is guys it, sorry it, I take photos it, 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 it all went and uh, but since then I think now he's like braced for it but in my head when I watch him I'm thinking we should be shooting from every single chance we get because we, I, 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 I 100% bully him. And actually, uh, that was the thing about the relegation scrap. When I watched Everton, I'm thinking, Frank Lampard, what do you know about a, chap, a relegation battle? No offence to the guy. like He's oh. obviously a, a hell of a footballer, but this ain't his sort of domain. And I'm looking at these Everton players feeling sorry for themselves, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at Joe Linton, like a battering ram. I'm looking at our team bullying them. And I thought, you lot don't look like you fancy this relegation scrap. Like, um, No, nah, I've been in it before when yeah. I was at Burnley, you know. Mm. Um, when, obviously, when, when you're in, in this position, it's... You know, it, like you said, it's it's, it's a dogfight, you know, yeah. and you know before you know it, it'd be, it'd be April, you know, and then May, yeah, will come end of the season. So, it's and, uh, one of the funny things that Eddie Howe was criticised for, which made me laugh, was people were going, um, "Oh well, he's he's only been in a relegation scrap once, and he went down." And I'm like, yeah. you do realise he's manager of Bournemouth yeah. for five years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that, one long that, relegation that was, scrap. That, he because people miss. I think they misunderstood that he overperformed as a manager for so many years, and obviously, you know, he, yeah, you got relegated with Bournemouth, but um, you know what a what a good stint he had there, and he uh, done really well. Though. Yeah, I feel I feel a lot of the fans when you watch a manager's interview, you're wanting to, to feel like he has a guy who's who's calm but has an edge to him, who's sensible but has um, that ability to act in in the time of need. And that's what's quite interesting as well is obviously you had him earlier in your career and now you've got him again. You notice a difference? Yeah, definitely. I feel um, from when I first had him, obviously I was was young, I think just after when I went to Barnsley, so I was there. Uh, I feel like now he's more more aware of like the way his style because I'm, before I um, signed for Newcastle, he was in Madrid watching us train, you know? Because um, he said he studied the game yeah. for a couple of years. Well, he was out for a couple of years. Yeah. And then he texted me, he, not him, Jason Tindall texted me probably early October, just before then, saying, oh, can we come and watch you train? So I was like, yeah, no worries. Then they came out just to watch how we, just how Simeone trains basically. But he weren't just us, he went to a few other clubs and he, he was studying other teams and, 
that just shows his commitment, the type of manager that he is, because he'll be a top manager. I have no doubt about that in mm. the future. So, um, yeah, it, it is, is, you can see he's, he's obsessed as well, you know. Um, I've heard that. If we don't do a drill properly, no, no, we'll do it again. Uh-huh. Don't do it properly. No, 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 we're doing it again, you know. So he's very good manager. I'm gutted that uh, Callum Wilson's injured. Yeah. This kid is another one who I didn't realise how good he was until he played for Newcastle because you naturally you don't watch every 90 minutes of every other club. And, you know, uh, unfortunately he's had some injury worries. But when I see him fully fit, I think, wow, if you could stay fit for a full season and get even okay service... You're, we're looking at a, a top striker there. He is. He's, um, even when he had that, um, he had the spell as well when he came away with England with us mm. as well. And he got a goal as well. I think it was against uh, USA, I think mm. it was. Yeah. No, but Carl's shown throughout his career as a goal scorer. Yeah. Obviously, uh, he's, he's out injured at the moment. But again, he's another one who's still positive. Still, he's a joker of the dressing room. Do you know what I mean? Oh, really? Even now, like, um, but I know and I can say that he's working hard to get back um, quality player such a finisher what about uh, your time at Spurs then yeah. because obviously uh, it, it, you went all the way to the Champions League yeah. final and, and this is a consistent thing in your career is obviously you're a winner you've, you've, you've done some great things but um, it, didn't, it didn't go your way but what, what a what a journey that was I remember that sem- was it the semi-final the semi-final I I was away, insane 3-0 yeah. down in the second leg Second leg. Was that the quarterfinals half- against Ajax? Semis. Semis, Semis against sorry. Ajax, and before that was um, was Man City before Man City that. City right. that. No, even that was a. Oh, but through, I'll make it short. But in the group stage, we had Inter Barcelona, and uh, P- um, Inter Barcelona, and I think it was PSV or something like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And everyone was saying it was impossible that we qualify in the group. We had mm. to beat Inter at home and away. We did. We had to get a result away to Barcelona. We did. We qualified, so we got wrote off from the start, basically. Um, and yeah, we play City, and then Raz, I think it was Raz who scores the last second, and then it was called offside. It was off on the floor, devastating. I was going to say, what's it like being in the stadium, and then that's the first time where like a VAR type situation yeah, sort of popped crazy. up, really? That was crazy because I took the corner for um, Lorente to score, and people said it come off his arm, which I think it did, but uh-huh. he couldn't have done anything about it. And then two minutes later Raz scores and now we're thinking oh my god it's Dover it's done with and then it's offside and you're thinking hold on you know <laughs> because you're playing City away and yeah. the Ajax one were mad like Lucas comes up with bags and hat-trick Jesus. in the second half and as soon as he scored the third we're thinking no way has this happened no way that final it, it felt like a really it strange final no, it Lawrence is a Liverpool fan sorry about that but I don't um, think do you agree though do you think it were a penalty um Oh uh, yeah, there's no debate in my mind. No, no, yeah, come absolutely. on. Now be honest. Um, because Mane chips it, and but I get what you're saying. Sizoko's already made himself big. It's one of the ones where it's technically a penalty, but it's not a penalty. Yeah, I understand. And so those rules are like they apply those rules in a really stupid way, and that's yeah. where you want a good referee in the final who yeah. goes. Well, that changes. Oh, I don't that, see it that way. That and, changed everything. Though. And they understand the flow of the game and yeah. stuff like that. And I, just, I think that's what ruined that final really for for Liverpool fans as well. We looked at that, and obviously there's a sense of relief for us. Yeah. But it didn't. It it, it killed it the stopped, game. It killed the game, and especially yeah. for you guys, I think, because we you you guys were very much you'd had that run. It was like right, we they had the offside. I'm not gonna lie. We, we had that run as oh, well. Right. You, yeah, you, you felt confident going. Hundred percent. Just because the way the City game went, the Ajax game went, we thought stories exactly. Written. We felt confident, and then two minutes into the game or whatever it was, we you get a penalty, and I think that just killed the game. It, it, this is the I'm thing, though. Yeah, from a I fan's agree. point of view, you're looking thinking if you're gonna concede. The opening five minutes is yeah, gutter, definitely. but you've got so much of that game left. But it looked as if it mentally dr- uh, drained you guys no of course the second minute when we go 1-0 down and then but even in the game I thought okay what the prettiest of games was it really no, I think it, not at all Champions League final you're expecting final oh, it was brutal, mate. mate you should try yeah. playing in the game <laughs> you, if you're playing in the game try talking about that stuff yeah, no, it's really hard yeah, it, weren't, it weren't the best one of the best <laughs> yeah. entertaining finals yeah, to watch that's not your fault we're not having a game yeah exactly yeah. no 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 I, I, I agree with you mm. um but yeah, I thought we, there were some moments where I thought we was on top of the game, but mm-hmm. then when obviously Origi comes on and he bags that second goal, it's finished. Killed the, it. The game's uh, done. Mm. 100%. What was so different about that Spurs team, do you think? Because Spurs have got this thing now where people always say, oh, it's Spursy, which is 
to, to put it like what we've just seen in the last month where they'll play amazing against Man City yeah, yeah. Harry Kane looks untouchable and then in other games they, they're just a, a shell of that but in that season Spurs weren't Spurs Spurs were battlers they had quality they especially had sp- in Potra there yeah mm-hmm. they had spite they had a nasty yeah. streak about them which I think was what Mourinho was trying to get back into them when he gave his little speech there what they need to be um why were they so different that season? I don't know. I had to say, really, but especially when Potter there with us, mm. we was like machines. Mm. The, the, not just the eleven; everyone was just machines because the way we trained and stuff. But especially why why Hart Lane as well was was tough to beat. Mm. The two years where we were challenging for the Prem, where the game at Chelsea, which was absolute just carnage, mm. like. So that was where they nearly fought, wasn't it? Like they oh, were yeah, like yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were scraps did. on the um, sideline. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the night in Leicester. I was in Leicester for that night That's watching your game. Yes, that, you, that was the league, season. Right? That, that, yeah. was the that was the night they won. That was a Hazard it. goal. Was that the night they won it? Yeah, so oh, you, you right. yeah, drew that game and then it was a draw, right? 2 all. Was it 3 2? 2 all for Hazard scored, didn't it? Right. Hazard killed it. And that was the night where everyone in Leicester was basically watching along with that and watching you guys fight. It was kind of wild. I think the one that killed us when the Leicester won the league is when they beat us at home. Robert Hoof scores two goals, two headers. I think it was two headers. That is like mental, isn't it? And if it? we win that game, then it changes everything, you yeah. know? But I'm not saying we would have won the league, but it would have for sure changed something. What was what was Poch like as a manager? Because yeah. you said you would have you would have appreciated an arm around the shoulder when you were going through that rough patch. Yeah. And he's I think the jury's very much still out on what level he's at because mm. at Spurs he had this air of the next big manager. Yeah. Didn't win anything. Then he goes to PSG, um, and it hasn't it's not been the right cocktail it, there, it, has it, it just hasn't quite happened for him like and, and players who even we, you know we'd expect to be performing well Messi isn't having the time of his life there for example Neymar has, has, yeah. not, has not been the it's player it's difficult to manage yeah. that isn't mm-hmm. it what he, was he his was, style because you've talked about Simeone he was brilliant no he was more I'd say on the front foot he was more machines say if he was playing like a Man City okay or whoever the the he used to analyse it the way he analysed it and took it onto the training field and the amount of time we was on there just mimicking the way City played and stuff it was he went into so much detail you know I think expecting people to be like machines and going into detail about the opposition so much and that that ain't the Paris way is it really well if you look at it there it's it's about you know, the individuals a lot isn't it you've got Neymar Messi Mbappe. Icardi mm-hmm. Mbappe Hakimi. Verratti Hakimi yeah. Ramos Di Maria is there Di Maria yeah. like Juan Yaldum Galacticos isn't it so yeah. it's pretty tricky to manage that set of egos it is you know and it's. It, I think it's hard for a manager because yeah it's just about keeping them happy I guess isn't yeah. it well you know you said one of the best things about Simeone is that he is larger than life at that club and he has so much command so much respect but when you're trying to tell Neymar who's got some contract where he gets a hotel if he scores a goal or whatever yeah for, but I don't think that I, I don't care what player it is uh-huh. you wouldn't get away without Simeone you don't care who you are Ex- exactly yeah. and it's tricky when you're then going into a, a you're club going in, yeah. yeah who when you're met with these massive players it's, it's easier for the chairman to go yeah we'll just change the manager so where is your where's your what are you trading off of here yeah where's your value <laughs> yeah. it's difficult I just, it's hard for me to to answer that mm. how he is with them of course it's difficult but have you seen a, a, a player throw a bit of a bitch fit you know where they're, they're having a bit of a moment where they think they're too good for something or they're, they're, they're a bit where you've looked at someone and thought you're getting too big for your boots you don't have to name and shame um, but have you seen that happen I'm just trying to think well they tend to think that they're better than as in like I'm Gaffer I'm not doing that I'm sorry like but um, because I've, I've like we well, had Kieran Dyer on the on the show love Kieran great guy but he said when he was in his prime he admits he was a bit of a knob. Threw his like, weight around a bit. You know, he, yeah. Bobby Robson would say, "Are you going to play this position?" He say, "I'm not playing that position." You know, like oh, I've, I've never really come across anything like that where if a, if a manager says you're playing this position, I've never really come across stuff like that. But really? uh, maybe, maybe in training, mm. maybe if a player doesn't agree with the manager or whatever, I've seen I've seen that the bus stops. How yeah. do you see Matt? It, like, it, it's quite interesting because obviously there's also going to be people who think they know what gets the best out of them. So, you know, there's that contrast of like, well, you're here to do what I want to do. Yeah, but I'll score goals or I'll get crosses in yeah. if I do this. Yeah, I would never ever second guess my manager. Right. If he wants me to do something, I'll do it. So there might come a time where I think, well, I could maybe do a little, I could do better in. How do you approach this? that? Do you try yeah, a private chat? 
instead of or? Um, yeah I, I, would, I would never challenge my manager uh -huh. but if it's not like I'm not disagreeing with if I just think I can be better at doing this in this instance I'll mm. say something but I won't, I'll just ask him his opinion you know and yeah. if he feels it's right it's right if he doesn't I'll do whatever he expects me to do we're, get, we're getting a little uh, saying to wrap up wrap up a couple, couple of minutes yeah, yeah yeah it's fine uh, why do you think you know you come through the youth system and all of that I'm sure you've seen loads of talented lads who maybe didn't make it mm. what made you different to a lot of those people that you were growing up with it's a good question um, I played when I was at Man City there was obviously me Sturridge uh, Ben Me at the time and I, I had a really really good youth team um, but to your question it's hard to say really I think but, and more about your personality me, than anything I'm, I'm wondering what yeah. you think makes you the, the the person as well as the player that I think having become. the right people around me was important you know like my, my brother he used to play uh, in the football league and stuff and I think it's having the right people around you, you mm -hmm. know, um, not too many people who, who are telling you how great you are when you've had a bad game or do you know what I mean? And, you know, you want people around you who said, oh, you could have done better today. I have a lot of friends like that. Mm. Uh, I can remember when I got absolutely ripped once by Antonio, Chef Wednesday against Burnley. <laughs> I said, oh, I played all right today, didn't I? Didn't I? He went, no, no, you were shit. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I like that, you know, I like yeah. my, my friends like that and they are, they're brutal with me. Yeah. And my brother as well. So, um, yeah, it's most important thing, I think it's having the right people around you. Um, yeah, and like I said, I've known so many players who don't play now. It's so many quality players. Yeah, people to take different paths. You know, um, you seem very dedicated. Yeah, I am. Focus. I feel like I am. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm. I'm dedicated for sure. Quite level-headed, treating your ups and downs in a very similar way. I think that's through the experiences that I've had. You know, I've, like I said, I've, yeah, maybe I've been doubted throughout my career. I feel like you are an unlikely hero. That's like at, at Newcastle, but we're very grateful to have you. No, you I'm delighted to be here. Honestly, I am. It. No, mm. I am, and oh, hopefully, there's many more exciting um, chapters ahead for us. You all. better believe yeah. it. I mean, geez, no, I do on. believe it. Yeah, yeah, what, this what, is crazy. What's, what's your what's your couple, couple more questions? Okay. What's your belief in terms of where the club is headed? Given you have had probably conversations with the gaffer and yeah. Amanda Stavely and, and uh, Merdad and people like that. Like what, what, what kind of vision is being put to you? If we stay up, we need to build and then build again and build again and then go for the title. That's it. That's what we want. Final question. How would you like to be remembered? At Newcastle? Uh, in your career? Good question again. It's just more a player that um, gave everything. Um, never shied away from a challenge which I've I've done a couple of times like coming here the position Newcastle was in going out to Atletico Madrid um, and just the, the player that gave everything I know, like that. gave everything for every team that I played for so Ian uh, Wright give yeah. a very similar answer so yeah I appreciate that mate it's been an absolute no, pleasure thank you for having me I've loved it honestly, honestly I really appreciate loved you it. coming down no, I've, I've loved it as nice well because you. when you're a current player um, it, it, it's a lot easier to talk about your career when it's obviously it's being and gone and I know that uh, you know you're in a position here where you're getting a lot of different questions and it's a long form interview not something that plays a lot, a lot of the time literally it's five minutes after the game yeah. most of the time cheers see you later yeah, no, I don't yeah, mind so it I, I don't mind it at all mate honestly no yeah. thanks for having me I've loved it you. the fans have taken you massively no, yeah that is kind of crazy isn't it yeah. now, Brian normally hates the Newcastle squad so this is weird I mean, he's having you in the room <laughs> you know? well there's been a lot of years where it's to be fair hard. you've had good reason in previous years no, this is the first time I've ever seen like Brian actually go I think I might watch the game today. Nah, it's, exciting it's exciting now. It's exciting now, yeah. isn't it? You're I've known him. I've known him for so long, and it's no, literally I've always like watched the games, but it's been a very no, emotionally it, draining. What experience. I mean by that is, Brian normally goes, oh, "Yeah, we got the game this afternoon." I think, yeah, I think we'll watch it. And now he's more like, "Game's on in a minute. Are we, uh, are we on? Are we ready <laughs> no, to go?" So it's quite it's funny a to watch. Different feeling altogether. No, that's good. Mm. It's not about winning and losing. It's just the energy you lads are uh, applying to that to the to the games now. It's something that the fans are really proud of, and it and represents. The players, the and honestly, the players will appreciate that, and the players mm. just want to give good performances, as you've been yeah. seeing, and want to be successful to to make the city buzzing again. Yeah. So, no, the, the players will would appreciate. Love good luck fans. between now and the end of the season, because yes, I mean, it, like I said, it it keeps us uh, in a good business all, as well. All, if he's all the happy, best, mate. I, no, I appreciate it, honestly. Absolutely. No, thank you for having me, mate. Thanks all for right. me. That was Kieran Trippier on the True Jordy podcast. England right back, Newcastle right back. Even now, we don't need to wait for people to retire anymore more they come on while they're doing it <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much for watching hit the like button subscribe and we'll see you later cheers